So Village is an award-winning board game about a village and living in a village and, and being in a village, but not a modern, boring, everyday village where there's nothing to do except huff drugs and beat up dogs. No, it's about living in an olden times village from the past where you and your entirely uninsured family members can do such dangerous things as, as work on farms or, or be cart rights or, or, or enter local government somewhere or d dedicate life to the church or meet a lady. But don't worry if you don't have a pastoral streak, because in Village your family can actually do just as well fleeing the town and never coming back, or dying. Which sounds intriguing, it doesn't does it? It does sound, I am intrigued. Why don't you come to our village? village? Tell me about how do you stay a while come in the village. Stay in our village. Stay forever. Stay forever or between 60 and 90 minutes. So this is uh, the village in the game of village, which represents the village into which you'll be putting your villagers. Uh, individually, you'll have to you'll have to uh, label them with numbers, like you're sending. Can you see that? You're, like you're sending them into a tiny death camp. Anyway, uh, to try and escape the death camp analogy, most of the time your your villagers are away working hard on your own individual farm sets, which are actually off the board, and instead. This board is full of possibilities. It's full of tiny cubes that represent different things, and it's also full of animals like ox and horses, and it's got plows, and it's got a mill, and there's also this kind of creepy black bag, which is a sort of a metaphor for something. Yeah, and you know what? The death camp analogy, it kind of keeps going because the village is a lovely game, but also one where you're bumping off your relatives when it benefits you most. So this is your lovely little farmstead, this is your lovely little family, and these are the lovely little children that have yet to be born. Ah, let us out of your womb! Uh, and what all you're going to be doing on your turn is interacting with one of the spaces on the board. So for example, interact with the cart right to send someone to go and make carts for the rest of their natural life. Lovely. But where things actually get cool is that all these different spaces on the board interact with each other in unique ways. So there's a bit to memorise, but let me show you what I mean. If you send a sun out into the world to explore it, you're going to get points for every single area you get to, but you're going to need carts for that. Well, that's okay, you've got a sun making carts, but those carts could also be sold at the market for points. You could also, rather than having a sun making carts, have someone in local government to get you carts. If they get to the top of the government, you can exchange money to be invested into the town for more points, where you can invest grain into the windmill to get money, and where do you get grain? Oh yeah! back on your farmstead from people working the farm. It's really quite neat. What about the church? I don't think I mentioned the church in this. Good. Right, but the game, the game comes from the fact that the board doesn't look like this. It actually looks like this. At the start of each turn, you draw cubes randomly from a bag and you populate all the spots on the board. And when you use a spot on the board, you take a cube away and add it to your inventory. There are no more cubes on that spot. You can't use that spot anymore. What does that mean? Well, here's the marriage spot, which you can use if you want to have babies. Let's say I'm first player, I take a cube, I have baby. It's, it's a level two baby that I can add to my level one family. You're not paying attention. You go and do something else. You go traveling, take a cube there. I can use the spot again. I can have another baby. And now you can't use the spot that turn anymore. You can't have any more babies. I've got all the babies, I'm king of the babies, and you can't, you can't baby. It's like I'm king of the babies, like in the film with David Bowie, like, David Bowie, king of the babies. And that's about as conflicty a strategy game as Village actually gets. Village is less a game about jumping for an option before it's closed off, and it's more a game about deciding when you're going to plump for an option, or, or how often, or what colour cube you want to collect, because the cubes are all lovely, they're lovely, you see. But it, it does mean that Village is actually quite a solitary experience, and people are far less likely to get in your way. It actually makes this one of the most relaxed strategy games we've looked at in ages. Despite the whole death thing. Uh, Quinns, do you want to do the, the death? Do I? Thing? Okay.
These cubes actually represent a layer of decision-making draped on top of village because every different one is required for different things. You'll be spending green in the government because it's persuasion. Orange represents skill and is used to make things. Brown is faith and is used in the church. And pink is knowledge and is used in the outside world, mostly because villages are terrible places. Churches are also terrible. Well, I mean, well, I don't mean, well, okay, so this is what happens when you send your family member off to the church. What you're really doing is you're consigning them to the, the, the deep black depths of desperation. You're hurling them into an abyss. You're throwing them into a darkness where there's no certainty except for death or maybe the, the slimmest, vaguest, vainest chance of some kind of tiny fulfillment and in the game. Tossing them into this nihilistic pit costs you either faith or time, and it's your hope that you'll see them again when mass comes. Mass happens at the end of each turn after all the cubes have been picked off the board, and it involves pulling unseen figures out of the bag. These might be your family members, or they might be somebody else's family members, or they might just be monks. Jet black, faceless, featureless monks. Monks that are worth nothing and that stand for nothing and that give you nothing. And in the game. If you pull out a family member, you can start advancing their way through the church. And this scores you points according to their seniority. The more grain you give them, the more they advance. So in that respect, I guess they're like pigeons. But joining the church doesn't give you any special abilities. It's just a chance to eat food and score a lot of points. Joining the church is really kind of an act of obsequiousness that you hope will win you reward. And in the Anyway, I was talking about cubes, but this is what's cool about village. Different areas of the board capture different people's imaginations. So, the last type of cube are these black cubes. And these are an even cooler idea, and even darker than the dark drawer of the church pouch. So, these last cubes, which someone's gonna have to take before the round's over, are plague cubes, and these steal time from your family. So when you take a plague cube, this disc will get accelerated around your board through the seasons. If you want to train somebody in something, if you want somebody to travel, if you want them to make something, you'll lose even more time as this slips through your fingers until finally it crosses this bridge. And at that point, someone in your family has to die. And it has to be someone from the oldest generation, which, if you haven't been paying attention, will cause you to start looking around the board in a panic, going, no, 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 who's the oldest, who's the... <gasps> and it was your traveller, and now he'll never see the lights of the capital city. And this is an idea that just keeps on giving because it keeps you thinking about who you're going to use and where. Last time we played, a friend of ours entered their dad into local government then picked up a plague cube and he burst immediately. No, 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 what you want to do is you want to send your very youngest family members out into a life of drudgery immediately, the very moment they're born. That's how you make the most of them. Which brings us to my absolute favourite mechanic in Village, this Book of Tales. So as people die, they'll be entered into this book. So the village can forever remember your dad who made two carts and then died of dropsy or whatever. But because you get more points the more people you cram into this book, Village can rapidly become an episode of Midsummer Murders as everyone runs around huffing plague cubes in an effort to bump off their mum first. Because it's for her own good. There are only a limited number of spaces for each profession and nobody wants mum in an unmarked grave. Oh. But that's just another way to play village. You can have lots of kids and then kill them all off like a spider. Or send them all away to a monastery in a corruption of the institution of worship. Or just keep your parents at home and then send the kids into town and run a kind of a sweatshop where you have them making wagons and, and Didn't breeding Didn't you say horses. this was a nice game? Well, it is a nice game. It's it's a lovely game. You have a nice time doing nice stuff. And the, when the nice book of deaths is filled up, and you fill up all the nice unmarked graves, then everyone's had a nice time where you didn't really rub up against the other players too much and there wasn't too much conflict and the game doesn't really have any claws, you know? Yeah, no, it is nice. I mean, like, it's nice like a cup of tea is nice, it's, but like a nice cup of tea. It's like, it's like a good cup of tea with friends or folding your laundry and listening to Radio 4, which it's funny because I hate folding laundry and I hate Radio 4 and I hate that sort of middle class self-satisfaction, but maybe I like it as a board game. Okay, you prefer a simulation of Kent to living in Kent. Kent.
So uh, I like this game because it's somehow simultaneously really quaint and really grand. It's complex strategy, but it's easy going strategy. I mean, by the end of the game, it's, it's, you've got a saga almost. No one on the board will be anyone who started the game. They'll all be dead, which is really nice. And, you know, it's not a game where you're trading vanilla beans or building up a city or anything huge. It's a game of your dad uh, dying trying to make a horse and then selling that horse, which is nice. It's almost like a, an e a like sitting down to watch a really easygoing soap opera. Ah, oh, that would be amazing. No, no, no. <laughs> Well, Father, it's time. The time has come. Aye. Well, I have lived a full and happy life, and I am ready to die with dignity. Is there anything left in the Chronicle? Well, yes. Yes, there is. There's one place left to die. Well, that's great. So that's the village. It's a game about a village that's, that's oh thank you very much, going to pack this away, uh, that's very pleasant and there is actually an expansion as well which introduces a tavern. We haven't got it though. Well no, no we haven't got it, which, actually I'm really impressed that you've, uh, that you've not got that. Yeah well I'm getting over my addiction to expansions. No it's amazing. It's I'm very, attending I'm the really... meetings. I haven't expanded in like a week and a half. I know, and I've been watching and I'm actually really, really pleased. Oh, thanks. It means a lot to have so. the support of a friend. Oh, oh my God, I am bushed. Yeah, well, that was a long review, but it was a good review. It was, it was, a, it was a good review. All right, I'm gonna really go to bed. I'm Wait. Very... I've told you to, you have, because what's the point? I'm, I'm very tired, I'm gonna go to bed. I'll see you in the morning. See you in the morning, dude. Village Inn is a really cool expansion. What it's going to do is it's going to add an inn to your village as well as some other stuff. And that's great because the original village, kind of a crap place. But now it has a pub. And not only a pub, a, uh, a brewery. And you're going to use that to cover the graveyard and the history book as alcohol raises your city's purpose. Or does it? You're then going to add a little graveyard to one side and you're going to assemble a history book out of this cool jigsaw stuff, and that's gonna happen. Now, what you're gonna add is a fifth player, optionally, but you probably don't want that because the game's slow enough with four, but you're gonna also add a ton of beer tokens, and you're gonna add a bunch of people you can meet in the pub. Now, so you're gonna think this is a cool expansion, right? The option, opportunity to send your kids off to the brewery, best dad ever. Well, it gets even cooler, because if you send people to the pub, they can meet all kinds of abbots and scrap dealers and peasant women's and mares and jugglers. Now, the reason I like this expansion is because in a game with lots of paths to victory, lots of options, it adds even more. In a game that's about storytelling, it adds, you know, stories and people who are gonna ch cringe. I'm so annoyed with you. I'm sorry. You know what this means. It's not. You know what this it's means. It's not an expansion. We an agreement. It's not an expansion. It's an expand alone. It, with the house rules, it could be an expand alone, and please, Paul, don't do this.